Hello, hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. Bitcoin continues to move in the range, unfortunately. Um, it hasn't reached the top of the trend line, of that descending trend line of the triangle. But I remain focused on a triangle pattern um, that so far has guided as well. Yesterday, also just a little bit more choppy price action. The Fed interest rate decision was a bit of a non-event. Not really any significant um, or increased volatility as we would normally expect it. Next big event is the CPI inflation data. I think that's gonna be next week. I would need to double check, I think it is. And um, yeah, it's just um, continuous choppy corrective price action in the triangle. So really looking at the big picture, if I go to the one hour chart, there is no change at all. The idea is still that um, Bitcoin topped in a wave one here in April and we're now coming down in a wave two and would afterwards rally in a third wave. Had a question, someone said, you know, why, why is my analysis always bearish? I should give some positive news. Well, first of all, this is actually quite a bullish analysis, yeah, because if the assumption is we rallied in a wave one, coming down in a wave two, this is simply the correction in a larger uptrend and the third wave rally should take us to 40K and beyond, um, at least as long as certain conditions are met and that is clearly the 22K level. A break below that level, as I said before, will make me consider more bearish options. I mean, I do consider them already. It's just, I'm not really focused on them at the moment because we're holding support quite well. Um, and, and yeah, any downturn, which simply would make this wave two more complete, um, is just part of the bullish overall outlook. You know, it's a correction of that move. Um, so it's a bit of a breathing in, breathing out what the market needs to do all the time. Completely normal. Of course, we don't need to come down lower. Yeah, there is, of course, a possibility we break out higher straight away. I did explain that, I think, yesterday. Um, it's just, obviously, anything can happen in these markets. The analysis only really focuses on what should happen, um, not really what could happen, because really anything could happen. We, we focus on what should happen. So... Um, from that point of view, it's it's overall a bullish analysis. Yes, idea is that we get here one more leg down and that is simply because the current price action, the current setup we have here, it doesn't really um, suggest a direct breakout to the upside, even though it's possible. But sometimes the market just chooses the unlikely path. And therefore, we need to know the key breakout points, the key invalidation points. The good thing about the Elliott Wave method is it always gives us the key invalidation points. Yeah gives us clear targets and also clear invalidation points. So we are still in the triangle. The idea would be as soon as this triangle is complete in an A, B, C, D, E pattern, um, it can always extend until we break out. And therefore it is so important to be so clear about the relevant breakout points until they are broken. Really, there is not really any strong evidence that the triangle is breaking. Um, so to the upside, it's the 30,050 level that would not directly send us up in a third wave. It would first make me look for a higher B wave because at the moment the idea is that this B wave in this ABC structure I showed you, A, B, C, that the B wave unfolds as a triangle. Um, only really, I think, if we really get above the 14th of April high, which is here sort of around the 31K area, only then I would be considering much more a direct breakout in a third wave rally. Until then, the expectation would be that a C wave is sending us down low. And I guess that was meant by the comment, you know, why, why this is such a bearish analysis. Now, again, it's not bearish. It just means a deeper setback in an overall uptrend. So it's not really bearish. Um, you know, of course, it could turn into something bearish, but that is just, you know, not really in the focus at the moment because it's just too far away. Um, maybe in the next video or the, you know, in the latest video today that I'll, I'll make, I'm going to show you again, the, the, the different counts, the bearish count and so on. I can't do that in every video. So hang around if you want to see them. Um, besides that, all, all that's left to do now is really to highlight the breakout point to the downside. And that's the B wave flow. And that is at 27,211. And also understand that everything I tell you here, obviously, in a corrective wave structure is only temporal. 
yeah, we are in a correction. We want to get back into an impulse so we get clear targets, clear structures. In a correction, you're going to face headwinds. Of course, you can trade the range. I've been saying that for a week uh, until it breaks for, for range traders. Um, but just be ready for the chop. <laughs> just be ready for up and down. Um, what else to mention? Yeah, let's just look at and sort of the last action here for this video. Let's look at the local sub wave structure of this E wave. As I said in previous videos, and you'll know about that if you've been watching these videos, an Elliott wave triangle consists of five waves. A, B, C, D, E. Each of the waves is a corrective structure. So if we're looking at the E wave, we also look for three waves. We do have three waves now. It would have been nice yesterday already here um, to turn around. It didn't do it. Yeah, they tried to, but then put an extension. And that's what I mean with until it really breaks the B wave low or at least the D wave low for a first indication. Um, a triangle can always extend and it did do that. Yeah, and you can see how that works because an initial three wave move evolved to a larger three wave move. Okay, so very, very clear. Now in this C wave now, so I count the E wave now as an ABC. In the, oops, in the uh, C wave, we have to go to the probably 15 minute chart. I can count three waves so far. Yeah, I can count three waves. We have a one two, three, possible four still unfolding here, maybe already in, certainly no overlap with wave one, and then one more wave up. Now, this is sort of out of proportion, really. Yeah, the third wave, yes, it was long, but the wave one was very long as well. Anyway, you get all sorts of distortions on the 15 minute chart, um, but it doesn't break any rules. You know, this is a possible five wave move in the C wave. Anybody who's not so familiar with Elliott wave, what we're ideally looking for in an ABC structure um, this needs to sit here. What we look for in an ABC structure is in the C wave, we're looking for a five wave subdivision structure. So it might need one more leg up. Again, this is the 15 minute chart. Don't treat it as, you know, this definitely has to happen. It certainly could end the E wave already because there's a WXY structure which could finish this already. But without evidence we're coming down, I can't really focus on that. I think very first indication based on what I see now here um, that we are starting the move down. That's again, it's a very first and early indication. It's not a confirmation or anything, but would be a break below the wave one high. Okay. So if we now break into the wave one price region, it would be a good indication we're coming down. That is at 28,820. No, 28,000. Yeah, 825. Yeah, so if we if we do something like that, if we come into that price region, yeah, and then just sort of do this. The reason is that in a C wave, I want to avoid an overlap between wave one and four. If it happens, it would be an indication that this move up is over. It's not confirmation or anything. It's just an early indication, something to watch. But yeah, besides that, um, only one more thing left to do, which is to give you and to, you know, comment again on the target for the E-Wave. And we look for the 61.8 extension, talked about that yesterday again, 29,350 nearly reached. Yeah. Also here, it's not a super accurate target normally, but it's one to watch. It's one of the common targets for a um, for an E-Wave. Yeah. The very first one is typically the 38.2 extension, and you can see how relevant this was here. We reached it here, reached it here, reached it here, and reacted to it, but um, it wasn't enough to stop price moving up. Yeah, and that's the situation we're in. Um, had one more comment about it's not a very, um, Elite Wave is not a very helpful tool if you keep moving the waves. Well, I can only say that this is completely normal. I explained it so often in, in previous videos why that's the case, why it needs to be done and why um, it's part of the process. So if you want to learn more, feel free to check out the channel membership. We provide tons of education in there about how to carry out Elliott Wave analysis, why moving the waves is not a problem. It's just part of the game. Um, th such a comment comes from a perspective that you think you need to trade every single wave, which is not the case. You trade the setups, not the waves. Um, but yeah, we talk about that a lot in membership. Anybody who's interested, feel free to check it out. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. 
Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.